really need to be careful about that. God says, love your enemies, pray for them, feed them. Don't lift your hands to me and tell me you love me when there's people out there you don't love. Well, praise God. Good morning. And may God bless you this morning. Um, we give God, God all the glory, all the honour, all the praise. Good morning to everybody that's there. May God bless you. May you fulfil every desire that is implanted in your hearts. I'm here with a word this morning to see Jesus Christ glorified. That's why we've come this morning to glorify the name of Jesus. I've come to share that through Jesus is salvation. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth. And there's no other way to the Father except that you and I go through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I've got a few things to say this morning. I'll give you a couple of notices for the church that we we represent, it's nice to see people on board, Reese and uh, Shakaya, um, our, our, our son Leah Shaka, I'm sorry, and Omar, thank you, it's lovely to see you, um, <coughs> and may God bless you, so bless everybody that's on, Lisa and Alison, happy birthday for yesterday, Lisa, uh, Alison, I did put it on, but for some reason I pressed a button and it, it comes straight off, so happy birthday. Uh, Prakash, it's, uh, may God bless you for coming on. We give Jesus all the glory and all the honour. Um, I've got a word this morning, as soon as I've done my notices, and the notices are for the church. This is for our part of the body that come together to worship God. And um, I'm, I'll f keep phoning people and making sure they're all right, or texting them, and making sure that everybody is in. Good health. Um, keep doing what we're doing. Uh, please pray for this sin. Um, um, I've been praying this morning and meditating. Um, and, and yesterday, um, as I say, I'm not going to start to blame people or governments. So I'm not here to debate with people and, and, and things like that. I won't do that. My belief is I love Jesus. He's the only saviour of the world. And that's my actual belief. So this evening, we've got um, Isaac on. Um, I'm really looking forward to, to, to hearing the brothers speak. And uh, I want to thank uh, Pastor Phineas for coming on and uh, preaching as well. And we're going to do a lot more, but it's just taking a little bit of time just to put things together, especially on the internet. Excuse me. The sun is blazing out there in Liverpool and good morning Aina and it's lovely to see you. I hope you and your husband are doing really well. Jan, nice to see you. It's um, <coughs> it's really good to be honest with you to be able to preach the word of God. Joanne, it's nice to see you. So, um, I've got my trusted Bible, uh, which I absolutely love. I know there's the internet, Mario Morning, Natalia, lovely to see you. I know people can go onto the internet and we can do a lot of study, and praise God for it. But there's nothing like picking up the Word of God and eating it. There's nothing like it. And speaking directly from the Word of God. 
So I, I thank God for what. So I'm going to pray, and then we'll go straight into the Word, and then we will share and see where we we'll see where God wants to take us at the end of the day. Um, but that's what this is about. So Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, Father, that you touch each and every person that is coming on now. I ask in the name of Jesus, Father, that your glory arises in their lives. Father, I ask that you let this word, Father, which I believe is from you, glorify your name. Father, I pray it sets these people free, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, would you, I can't bring them revelation, Lord God, I can speak your word, but it's only by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that you bring revelation to people that are on here right now, brothers and sisters. So, Father, I give you the glory, the honour and the praise for that, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, may you be blessed, may you be fulfilled in your desires, of the death and resurrection of your son Jesus Christ that died for each one of us to be able to come into your presence. So Father, may you be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Isn't he good? <clears throat> I love the Lord. Uh, I love looking out and seeing the sunshine. And for me, it's just standing there or sitting there and meditating on the word of God doesn't have to be deep meditation, it just has to be meditation where you're thinking on God's word, you're thinking on God's people, you're praying for God's people, and we're praying for each other, which is really so, so important. And while I was meditating this morning on the Lord, I was asking the Lord for different things, and this is what I believe God gave me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there's a lot of things going on with different governments all over the world. I'm not going to get political. They, they, they do whatever they feel they need to do. God's called us to submit to those in authority. And if God's put them there, then we honour God by submitting to them. So I thank God for that. And in thinking about that this morning and what's going on, when I've watched the news, we don't watch it really anymore. Very rarely over the last few days. It's all the same thing that's happening. Um, it's always about people dying. And it's always about the scientists. And I was thinking that I was saying to the world this morning. God, but what have they done? These, these people are so intelligent. But what have they done? Father, I've seen on the news, they come up and these, these politicians say, we've we've taken advice, we're, we're taking the, the, our lead from the scientific community. And I said, and I've been saying for weeks, but Lord, what are they actually doing? I'm just a normal fella that's in love with Jesus. Morning, Jim. I'm in love with Jesus. The politicians come on and they say, we're taking our lead from the scientific community. And I said, Lord, but to be honest with you, it just takes common sense. Father, they don't know what they're doing. They can't stop this coronavirus. Maybe one day they will. They're intelligent people and they will find a fix for this. And I praise God for them. And I pray that God touches these people and they find that we can get better within whatever they have to do. That's praise God for them. But I look at it common sense. Father, I say to my family, don't go out 
unless you truly have to go out. Because there may be a possibility we catch this coronavirus. For me, that's common sense. And I'm sure for you, for the people on here that I know, it's common sense. I don't need a scientist to tell me to stay in and stay away from coronavirus. And I was thinking on the word of God, and this is what God gave, gave me. <clears throat> I'll go more into it in a minute, but, I, so, but I'm not knocking them. What I'm actually trying to do is question why we put off blaming somebody else. In the end of the, at the end of the day, the scientists don't know what's going on. They can't govern the country. They've got statistics of saying this many people is going to perish. Then they change their mind and say this many people are going to perish. Then they go back again and say no, this many people are going to perish. All again, it's all about statistics. What I want from somebody is what I believe God's going to give you and I this morning. Total honesty. And here's my total honesty. I haven't got all the answers in here myself from God. In, in the sense of opening up the scripture, getting to know the Hebrew, getting to know the Greek, getting to know all of this. What I've done personally, I've put my trust in Christ. Why? Because my Bible tells me to. Let's go. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. James, this is for you. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. This is an ongoing joke with, with um, Jimmy and the lads in the centre. For those that don't know and that have come on, um, through Jesus we run a drugs and alcohol unit, um, supported housing in Hartlepool. So we started this so as we could talk to the people in the church and the lads in the centre. So they could still have the Bible studies and they could still have church. Now I know that sometimes it's good for us to Yes, that's it, no, sir. It's good for us to have some physical contact sometimes, and, and it's going to be good when we get back to church as well. I'm talking about we are the church as a body, but I'm talking about going into a church building, being able to sit down, have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, just say hello to somebody. That's what um, my desire is as well. But until that happens, God's got, let me tell you what God's invented. <clears throat> He's invented the internet. Now let me say this. <clears throat> Scientists may think that they've got all this good, and they have, and I thank God for it. But in the, in the atmosphere, which belongs to God, God is allowing these waves to go through and come up on your computer or your phone or your... God's done that. God's allowed them to have the brains to actually do that. And I thank my Jesus for that. So, <coughs> I know my congregation, thank God, they were going to buy me a jumbo jet. I don't need it now. <laughs> I don't need it. I'm okay. We'll send that money, we'll give it to the poor, and we'll bless people with it. I don't need another jet. Yeah? I can do everything from here without getting on an aeroplane and without flying somewhere. We'll be able to do that in the future um, so as we can have contact with people and meet people. But anyway, let's go to the Word of God. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he? who has been born king of the Jews. For we have seen, listen to this, we have seen his star. We have seen his star. 
in the east and have come to worship him. Then Herod King then King Herod uh, this is this he was troubled with and it was all Jerusalem was troubled with him. People were concerned that the Messiah's come. They knew nothing about it. They should have known because it was prophesied in Isaiah. And when they had all gathered, the chief priests and the scribes and the people together, he inquired of them, where is the Christ to be born? So they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, of Judah. For thus it is written by the prophets, thank you Jesus, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler, who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the twelve, he eh, called the wise men, determined from them what the star, eh, what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring him back, bring, bring, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him. Stop there for a minute. I may come and worship him. Well, King Herod was king of Israel. He didn't want a Messiah because we were going to take away from him. <laughs> well, what's the point of this? What do I believe God is saying to you and I today? Okay. This is what I believe God is saying. I personally don't buy any newspapers. Uh, not because of anything, I just don't buy them. Uh, but I know when I used to read the newspapers and uh, they'd have the stars in there that you could read to find out what your future is going to be like, what your day is going to be like. And this is from the stars. Let me explain something to you. These people are charlatans. These people are trying to get you and I to believe that the stars determine your life and my life. Well, let me go out in public and say this right now. Them stars in the heavens that God created will not determine my life. How my, they will not determine how my life is going to go today. My life is determined on the way God says my life will go. Now, this is the important part. It was Jesus that determined where that star went. Let me say that again. It was the birth of Jesus Christ that determined where the star went. That's why these wise men came and followed that star. Jesus determined, and he still determines, everything that consists in this universe. They will never determine, the stars will never determine how you and I are going to live. It's impossible. They cannot determine that. It's only Jesus that determines where every star moves and it doesn't move. It's Jesus. Stop reading the horoscopes in the newspapers. It's demonic. It's wrong. If you want to know about your future, that's going to determine, this Bible will determine where you and I are going. This word of God will determine a pathway for your life and my life. Whether we're Christians or non-Christians. I follow Jesus and because I've accepted Christ as my Lord and Saviour, I can read this with confidence that God has taken me on a path 
that's going to take me into his presence. If I was not a Christian, this can warn me of the path that I am going to go without Christ. Now, <clears throat> scientists, um, just thinking on this, there's a lot of people that have, have died. There's a lot more people that are going to die. And we need to pray, not for them, we can't pray for them anymore, the people that have died, but we can pray for their families. We can pray that God touches their lives. We can pray that God brings salvation to these people. What I don't want you and I to become is so radical that it takes us out of the presence of God. I, what do I mean by that? <clears throat> I've been watching TV sometimes and I see that all different religions in this country that are on the front line have been dying physically as they've been helping us. They have been laying their lives down for you and I. Different religions. And my prayer is once God revealed that to me, my prayer was started to change. My prayer started to change like this. Father in heaven, Father, they are sincere in what they actually believe, whether it's Jehovah's Witnesses, whether it's Mormons, whether it's Triogas, or whether it's um, Islam. Father, they are sincere in what they believe, but Father, they are sincerely wrong in their beliefs. Father, and it's only by the power of your Holy Spirit that can these people be changed and re regenerated in you, Jesus. Father, we can't give them revelation of the truth. That has to come from the power of your Holy Spirit. So, Father, would you send people to these people just to get an inkling of the truth that you can get in there, Lord God, and change their hearts and their mindsets, Lord God. That's how I started to pray. These people, they love a God that I call is a false God. We do not serve the same God. My God is Jesus Christ. Whether they believe that or they don't believe that, that is my belief. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and nobody comes through to the Father except that they go through Jesus Christ. What does that make Christianity? It makes it an exclusive club. You can't come and join the club and I get the benefits without going through Jesus Christ. So if you wished, so please, I am not ridiculing you in any way, shape or form. God's called me to pray for you. God's called me to love you. You may be doing really good works. You may be on the front line of these good works. But what you and I say is good, God doesn't recognize it being, as being good. I can help as many people and feed thousands and thousands and thousands of people. We can give everything away that we've got, but it'll never get you and I into the presence of Jesus Christ. There's one thing that gets you and I into the presence of Jesus Christ, that you and I call on the name of the Lord thy God. 
and we repent to Jesus Christ and we thank him for dying on that cross for our sins. You and I can have a relationship with God. We're the only, what we call, what they call religion that can and has a personal, personal relationship with God. Jesus is compatible with every other religion. So compatible, it's unbelievable. Except for one issue. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. And nobody goes through to the Father except that they go through him. So it doesn't matter how much good works that we do. Remember, pray for these people. Pray for them. Pray for those that persecute us. Pray. Feed them. Love them. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love conquers all. If you haven't got love, we've got nothing. Pray for the brothers and sisters that are in different countries. That are living in Muslim countries. Pray. What society won't tell you and I is the amount of people, Christians, brothers and sisters that are dying all over the world be just because they're Christians. Every day, thousands, just because they're Christians. We don't hear this on the TV in this country. What we hear about is everybody else getting persecuted and nothing about Christianity. And that comes from Africa and it comes from Pakistan and India and everything. We don't see the persecution of Christians. The only persecution we see is of other religions and especially Muslims. So for you people that are out in your country, you need to forgive us. We don't realise what you're actually going through. We just don't. Because it's not shown. We're shown back to front what you're actually seeing. That's it. We're shown back to front what's going on in these countries. It's Christians that are dying. That are getting persecuted in every country. But nothing's ever shown. But you know what? Jesus sees everything. So this is why it's important that you and I pray for other religions. That they come to know what it is to follow Jesus. And when these people come to Christ, if I want to really get inspired, this is what I do. I go and grab a copy of the Fox's Book of Martyrs and I start reading that. Or I will use YouTube and I'll go and watch the testimonies of Muslims, of different faiths, coming to Christ because for some of these people that come and make a decision for Christ they literally have to give up everything to follow Jesus in this country if you and I wanted to change our faith, faith every five minutes no one would bat an eyelid but in these other countries, it can be devastating. That's why I say, let the Jesus determine where you're going to be. Where he is, there you and I can be. The stars will never determine your life. 
God himself gave them stars life. The scientists, listen, I, this is my, 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 my point of view. They're doing trials in this country. <clears throat> um, for people to get an antidote for coronavirus. This is my point of view. You want to watch how shrewd the enemy is? He's as wise as a serpent. This is what I say. Don't ask the general public for volunteers to come in and be tested and go through to find out whether they've got a cure. Why don't you go to Parliament? Ask all the MPs. Ask royalty. Ask them to do the testing to find out whether it works. Yeah? If you governments in this country, if you're so sure that, it's, that it may possibly work, put your family up front to be done. If you believe in these scientists more than Jesus Christ, put your family up front. You're leading the country and this is the, this is the issue. You're, you are not leaders. You lead people nowhere. You send our armies and armies around the world to go and fight other people. You politicians are sitting there. Why don't you get up, get a gun, and go out there and fight? Why don't you take this test to find out whether we've got a, we can fix this coronavirus? Why don't you put your families forward? You want to lead the country? Lead by example. You want Christians to pray for you? Lead by example. And let me say this to you. You may not like Christianity. You may detest this as a foolish idea. Let me tell you. I live by faith. You may be saying faith. Silly. Stupid. Well, let me tell you. You want me to follow this government by faith that don't know what to do and you're, you're blaming all the scientists. They don't even know where we're going. They can't fix this coronavirus. And yet you're blaming them. And basically all you've done and said to us is stay in. I'll bet you there's not many of you drop to your knees and ask Jesus Christ into your life to change this nation. And I personally believe it wasn't for Christians in this nation to be a lot worse off. And not just this nation, but around the world. So please, leaders of this country, please lead by example. Don't throw the people to the slaughter. Send your own families if you want that. If you believe so much in the science that you keep saying day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, put your family up for testing first to see if all this works on them. Faith. You want us to be in faith that you've got it all correct. You haven't got anything correct at the moment. Because at the moment there's tens of thousands of people dying. And you say that we're lunatics who are believing in God. And yet you want us to believe in you. And all you've told me to do, this is all I've heard on the internet, on the news when I watch it, stay in and isolate. Okay, I've done it. Coronavirus is still spreading, and when we all go back out, 
it's going to re-spread because they haven't fixed it. So I'm telling Christians, you need to be really careful until they can get a vaccine for this. Don't keep going out and do what you think. And if they say it's okay to go out, listen, be very, very careful because they haven't fixed, fixed it. You third world countries, you're doing a fantastic job. Your leaders are doing a better job than our leaders. You haven't got as many people as us dying. Yeah. I'm trying not to be really political, I'm just looking at this and I pray about all this as well. But I don't want somebody telling me that they've got worked out and they've done it. And I'm not blaming anybody for the virus, I'm not blaming anybody for anything. But who would you follow? Have you got enough common sense to stay in? We'll always get people shooting out and doing different things like that. That's part of humanity. But I want us this morning to focus on Christ. I want us to focus on it's about him drawing you and I closer to his presence. He determines what happens? It's not the end of the world. I personally don't believe that. I believe we are getting there. I do not know the date or the hour, and nobody does. Nobody does. It says, be ready, be prepared. Are we ready? Are we prepared? So please, you Muslims, you Jehovah's Witnesses, you Mormons, and every other religion that's in this country, I pray really, sincerely pray for you. Seek Jesus Christ. I get so inspired with the testimonies, especially of Muslims, that I've had to leave absolutely everything to turn to Jesus. And every, nearly every one of them is the same. Jesus, if you come to me, I'm going to believe, I'll give you the week, will you come and show me? And he's turned up to them. And they've turned their lives right around and they're now following Jesus under persecution. It doesn't matter what you and I do. If it's not done through Christ, it's not going to count for anything. We can gain the whole world and lose our soul. We can have big houses and everything, but if you haven't got Jesus, you haven't got anything. And that's fine, if that's what you want to believe. You may be sitting out there now saying, I don't believe in Jesus. I believe in science. That's fine. Can I ask you a question? Simple question. For you atheists and you um, scientists that don't believe in God, I ask you one question. If you can prove to me, without a shadow of a doubt, that there's no God, I'm going to follow you. If you can prove to me. If you can prove to me my beliefs is wrong. I want to follow you. I can't be fairer than that. You can say to me, can you prove God's real? You're right, I can. 
Absolutely, you're 100% right. I can prove the reality of Jesus Christ. How do I do that? It's quite easy. You and I get on our knees now. Let's ask Jesus to come into our lives. Let's ask him to forgive us. All this is by faith. Doesn't want nothing out of your bank. Just wants to come in and have a relationship with you. You want to know the truth about the universe? Why don't you ever ask Jesus? You say we come from a big bank. You want us to believe that? Come on. Don't be silly. You're supposed to be intelligent and you want us to believe this? So if you want to know Jesus, He'll prove himself to you. You and I only have to do one thing. Get on our knees and ask God to come into our lives and show us the truth. The difficulty with scientists is they keep asking people. This is my question to you. Have you not asked God to show you his reality. Your answer will be, well, I don't believe in him. Well, why are you asking me? I'm not God. Why don't you ask God himself? Is he real? You may get an answer that's going to shock you. Don't go before God's arrogance in arrogance. Go before the throne of God and say, God, I don't fully understand and at the moment I'm finding it difficult to believe. Can you show me the truth of your reality that I may just be able to grab hold of and keep hold of? Why do we have to complicate God? We, you and I, will never be God. <sighs> Mormons, please, please, I pray with all my heart. You'll never be God. You'll never have your own plan to be God of you. Please, please, grab hold of the truth. It's Jesus that died for us. And he wasn't the brother of the devil. Please, Muslims, I pray for you. Do you see where the deception comes in? Jehovah's Witnesses, Muslims, Mormons, They've all got one thing in common. Buddhism as well. All got one thing in common. Somebody went away to pray and God gave them revelation and that was it, full stop. So, <clears throat> what I would say, somebody's wrong. I wouldn't take that chance. I believe... We've got eyewitnesses to the birth of Jesus, to his life, to his death, to his resurrection, and afterwards. We've got eyewitnesses that were there. And you can pick any Bible, any Bible up. You can look into it and you can find the presence of God. Please pray for these other religions. I get so convicted 
and there are people in other religions dying on the front line and they're not going into the presence of God that may hurt you you may say that's not fair I say unfortunately we all get the same opportunity and that's what this is about I pray for their families that they find Jesus. Talk to us. We haven't got every answer. Most of the time we just pray for you. We're not here to change your mind. I'm not here to do that. I'm here just to speak the word of God. And I speak at it as a single life. But when people are speaking to me, I have to use discernment and the wisdom of God. And when I see somebody blaming somebody else, and in a sense what I'm saying is blaming somebody else, when they say we're taking our we're taking our lead from the scientist, who's running this country? Is it the scientist or is it the parliament? We need somebody to stand up and say, listen. We've got it wrong. We've been taking too much notice of these. These haven't got a clue what they're doing. Scientists, go away. Find an antidote for this. Come back to us when we've got something. Then I mobilised all this country to get the... Um, whatever's needed in the hospitals, let's just do that. That's just common sense. Help these people. What that needs to be paid. We're going to be in this for a year. So let's, let's not beat them out the bush. There's no quick fix to this. And if they keep sending us out after a few weeks time, more people are going to die. More people are going to die. Take control of the government. Don't hand responsibility to somebody else and don't blame somebody else. So now the government are blaming the scientists. We're taking advice from them. They haven't got a clue where they're going. Go find an antidote, a vaccine. Come back and then say this, that, and the other. You chaps with all the statistics. We're not getting all the statistics anyway. Call on the name of Jesus Christ. He'll give you and I all the help that we, we, we need. Let me tell you, right at this moment, I'm rejoicing in Jesus. I'm not rejoicing in, in what's going on out there, but I'm rejoicing in Jesus. And if you call on the name of Jesus Christ, he will give you salvation. Now this may even not be a sermon that you wanted to really hear but unfortunately I'm not one of these pastors that's going to sit back and watch you take all this information that's coming in I'm going to tell you the truth where Jesus was born he determined where the stars come from where Jesus was born he determined that I was going to come and know him I didn't need any Ouija board or any stars or anything like that. I just followed where Christ was and I determined just to ask him the truth. And you can do the same. So please, Muslims, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, you are so sincere in what you believe. You are sincerely wrong. There's only one person, his name is Jesus. You are not going to heaven unless you go through him. That's a fact by what the Bible says. You can like me or dislike me for it. Call me whatever you want. 
But that's the truth. Jesus does love you. Jesus wants you to come into his presence. So I challenge you as well as the scientist. This is the challenge. Why don't you ask Jesus to come into your life and show you the truth? Instead of trying to debate with people. Go and ask the creator of the world. What is truth? I find that quite simple. Ask Jesus himself and I promise you he will come into your life and he will show you the truth. Because it's the truth that's going to set you and I free. And I thank Jesus for that. I thank him that he died for me. And is this by faith? You're right, it's not by faith. But if that faith has become more reality to me, it is more reality. It's tangible faith now. Why? Because of the presence of God that dwells inside of me, that gives me, gives me that truth and knowledge of who he truly is. That's something I could never give you and no one else can. So you brothers and sisters out there, don't batter people with the gospel. Don't batter them. You're not going to win. Show them the love of Christ. And just say to somebody, if, they, if they're coming in, if you told them, listen, would you like to meet Jesus? Why are you asking me? Have you ever thought of asking God? And usually the question is 99.9% is I've never asked him. Well, why don't you just ask him? If I want to know something around the house, especially to find something, I go to my wife. I don't start something now because I start getting angry and bitter and where is it? Where you moved it and blaming somebody else? Oh, and all this. I go to Margaret and she says, here it is. I put it away for you. It's called using the wisdom of God. Go to the source. And that's what I do. And that's what I challenge you to do. Go to the source. And my heart cries out for you. Our cries out for the devastation that's going on right now. I could go on about different things, but I don't want to. I want Jesus to point you in the right direction. And not anybody else. He's the only one that can give you and I life. And I'm not going to come on every day and every Sunday morning or an evening or whenever it is, and give you a sermon which is going to tickle you and keep you uplifted and all the rest of it. I can't do that. As pastors, we need to tell the truth in love and with the wisdom of God. For me, truth is truth. And you know, one day, when you and I pass away, and we go into the presence of God or not God, there's no turning back. You don't get a second chance when we die. I come from a, a background where most of my family are known with Catholicism. And you can't go to church, pay somebody to pray for you, to get them out of Hades to get into heaven. It's not going to happen. It will never, ever, ever happen. Jesus died once and for all, that each one of us get the same chance. Otherwise, he would be, he would be an unfair God. Otherwise, we may as well do what we want on earth and have other people praying for us when we go to Hades to get up to heaven. That's an unfair God. 
God gives us, you and I, the same opportunity now. Not when we die, now. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. Waste of time. I'll carry on on that some other time, what we're going to. I want us to take a couple of minutes and just, just pray. Pray for those that are over us. Whatever country you're in, brothers and sisters, pray that God's wisdom comes into your government and our government. Pray that they take responsibility for the people. I want to follow somebody that's honest. I want to follow somebody that says, I've made a mistake, I'm going to be, and if they do that, I can be the side and pick them up and say, come on, let's carry on. So you've made mistakes. We all fall, we all fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us. I like to think I've got a great bunch of people and staff and everything that, that if I fall down, they're ready to pick me up. Mistakes as well. But we're all frightened to say we've made mistakes. Especially in Christianity. Please, there's nobody perfect, only him. He makes us perfect to get, listen, he makes us perfect to be able to go into his presence by his death and his resurrection and the power of the Holy Spirit coming to live inside of us. That's the only reason I've been perfected in spirit. That I can go into the holies of holies. I don't deserve it. I'm going to say a prayer. If you wish to say this prayer, then you say it. And if you're going to watch this on, in groups or, or however you're going to watch it, I'm going to give you an opportunity to meet with God. And it's going to be quite simple. It's not a biblical thing. It's not, it doesn't say in the Bible we do it this way. I, I'm saying all this because I know what comes. It doesn't say in the Bible this is the way we have to do to get saved. It says that we call on the name of the Lord. I'm not God. I don't know your heart and I don't know your mind. And the people that you're actually with or you're going to watch this in, in groups, they don't know your heart. So what they will do I just need you to acknowledge that you've accepted Christ so whoever's around you knows and they can pray further for you. Is, does that make sense? Then they can get you discipled, they can disciple you themselves and they can bring you to, into the presence of God that you get to know his glory. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my salvation. Father, there's people out there, Lord God, that truly, I believe right now, want to know you are not sure because they've been having teaching from different religions and different people Lord God and they're fearful that they may lose their family Lord God they're fearful even of death because it may cause some to die Lord God Father, I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you accept their forgiveness. As to, Father, forgive me my sins. Jesus, would you come into my life? Would you prove yourself to me of who you truly are? Jesus, I don't want to debate anymore with different religions about it. I want you to come into my life and change me and prove to me it's about you and nobody else. Would you put your Holy Spirit asking to come into my life as a down payment, as a guarantee that I am going to be in your presence? Jesus, I fully still don't understand. Change my heart, Lord God. In Jesus' name. I'm going to pray again. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for every person that is out there, Lord God. I pray.
Father, where this healing needs to be healed, I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you heal these people, whether it be physically or whether it be spiritually, Lord God. Father, I ask that your glory arises in each and every one of their lives. Father, I ask by the power of your Holy Spirit that you put your arm around them, that your glory arises. Father, I ask in Jesus, Jesus' mighty name, that you be with them. Father, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can I just, will you give me two, two minutes and then we'll have communion? Usually when I, when I, when I pray, <clears throat> I'm not going to give words of prophecy and knowledge. I'm just going to share what God shows me. Yeah, And usually when I pray and when I'm, I'm preaching, God will show me this, different things in the Spirit. I haven't got time to explain how he does it. But I can assure you, for many, many years, even while I was just becoming a brand new Christian, God would share and show me different things. And last evening, last night, um, what God showed me was um, a sword, and that sword was pulled out. And then what God was showing me, that sword was going to, it was slicing the darkness. And as he pulled it, the sword was pretty dark. And as he pulled it, the light come on it. And it was for slicing through the darkness of people's lives. So by faith, now listen to this, this is only by faith, I can only share, I believe this is God. You can believe it or not believe it. I'm just sharing with you what I believe God is sharing with me. You can take hold of this or you can reject it entirely up to yourself. I'm not here to do all this. Please don't look at me. Look at Jesus Christ. Focus on him, not me. I'm just his servant and I humbly come before him now. But I believe whatever country you are in right now, I'm telling you, God has given us a sword to break down and cut through any darkness that's in people's lives. Cut down, take hold of it by faith and cut down and cut through the darkness and the mayhem that's in people's lives. God has given you this. He's also, this is the sword, the word of God. Yeah. Take it and cut down. Use the word of God. If you want to physically take that spiritual sword, you can do that as well and cut through. But you've got to cut through and break the bondages that's over people's lives. The more and more people that come on here need to be broken. The word of God needs to go out in truth. Whether people like it or not, we need to speak truth. We're not here. I am not here to be liked. I'm here to preach what I need to preach so that you can be set free. That's why God has called me. Whether people believe it or they don't, I don't want your money. I don't want your airplanes. I don't want your houses. I personally want nothing of anybody but to see people free that I may personally glorify the living God. That's all I desire. So what I give you and how I talk to you is I believe it's from God. I don't look at other preachers and say, oh, I wish I could preach like him. I preach the way God's called me to preach. He sent me to a people that are not on familiar language. That's the way God calls me. And I'll tell you, I've been so blessed by God since I've become a Christian. It's unbelievable. Not tons of finances for myself and all, and big houses and cars. And I'm talking about being blessed, being able to be in his presence and seeing people set free. So you pick up this word. Let me tell you, do it by faith and cut through all the darkness that's in your life. 
pick that sword up. Listen, it's a spiritual sword. It's got the word of God on it. If the darkness is going off, because some of us have had it sheathed. You know what sheathed means? It's left in there. It hasn't been pulled out and it hasn't been used. And that's why some of you and some of us are in the states that we're in. Because we haven't used the word of God to cut through the darkness in our lives. That's why we're getting depressed and oppressed. That's why the enemy's coming in and doing what he wants to do in your life and my life. Because we haven't unsheathed it. We haven't opened it. And used the word of God. That's why we get oppressed and depressed. Rejoice in being isolated. There's not one day, and I've been here nearly six weeks, there's not one day I've thought, oh, not another day. I've got up and I've rejoiced and I've said, God, I can go to your word. If I want to know more, I want to study, I can go to the internet. If I want to pray, I can pray. If I want to pray with my wife, I'll pray with my wife. If I want to do a bit of gardening, I can pray going around with God. But God, I'm going to use these days to glorify you, to find out what you want to say. And I've unsheathed the word, the sword of God. And I've opened it, and I'm going to use it. And if that means coming and helping you, I'm going to pray that God does this. So in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray by your sword, your word, that people are set free on here, whether that be healing, Lord God, physical, Father, you say whatever we ask for in your name. If it glorifies your name, Lord God, you're going to do so. I pray for every person on here, Lord God. Every person that's going to look on it, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you touch each and every one of them, wherever they are all over the world right now, Lord God, India, Africa, Pakistan, Lord God. Father, I ask that you touch them. Father, them, them Two families in Pakistan that I prayed for a few weeks ago. Father, I ask that you touch their lives right now, that you minister to them. Father, that you get them fed physically as well as spiritually, Lord God. Father, they are witnesses for you, Lord God, of how great you are, Lord God. Father, I want to tell you we love you. Father, in the name of Jesus, no matter what happens, we're going to stand. My last dying breath, Lord God, will always be, I love my Jesus. And that's something you can never, ever take away. You can take my physical life. You can take my home. You can take my possessions. You'll never, ever, ever, ever take my spirit. My spirit is going to be with Jesus Christ. You will never, ever stop that. I'm saved by the grace of God. I'm set free by the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, I am joyous, even in all these circumstances. I'm giving God glory and honour. And that's why I am still set free. And nothing is going to hold me. In the name of Jesus. And you have got to be the same. Take your sword out the sheath and use it. Because some Bibles have been left there and they've never been used. Get the dust off them. Open them up. Read them. Some of you leaders and your pastors, you've never opened your Bible for a long time. Start opening them. Start preaching the truth and the word of God. Don't build a church. He builds his church. You and I are to preach the word. Listen. Whether you've got five people or 25 people or 5,000 people, it doesn't matter. God's given you the amount of people that you and I can cope with right now. You and I are assistant pastors to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's his body. It's his church. Not yours, not mine. You and I are going to be standing before the throne room of God one day. So make sure that you and I give Jesus Christ all the glory, all the honour and all the praise. It doesn't belong to us, so let it go. Stop building our kingdom and let God build his kingdom.
Don't mean to upset you. But that's the truth. We've all been there. We've all thought we're doing it. And it's been the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take communion. Pastor Isaac's on tonight. Listen to him. He, I love listening to him. He opens up the ways. And each, each pastor, each leader, each person that comes on from us, we all preach differently. Every one of us. And God gives us a wealth of knowledge through the sharing of the gospel in our fellowship and our centre. We are so blessed. So, so blessed. We may disagree in some doctrine. The three of us and the deacons and the elders we may disagree but we're in unity. We agree to disagree with each other. Why? Because we're in the kingdom of God and we don't know the full truth or whether they're right, I'm right or anybody else is right. See, something come on last night I thought, God, I wish this person knew what I believe. You praise you, but you don't believe what they believe and they're off, woo, and they're calling you for everything. Anyway, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your death, for your resurrection. I thank you that you've given us an opportunity to come in, Lord God, and to take communion in your presence. Father, we do this right now, Lord God, that you broke your body for each one of us. Father, forgive us, Lord God, forgive me if there's any issues in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we come to take and share and take on board, Lord God, why you died for us and that you're going to do this again when we meet you, Lord God, in paradise. I truly thank you for it, Lord God. And I say in the name of Jesus, Father, we do this in remembrance of what you've done for us and that you're coming back one day for us. And Father, may you be glorified through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, I thank you for your patience. I really do. Um, I really, really truly do thank you. I pray that God blesses you. For those that belong to our fellowship, I know Lisa's been in touch with me and asked, I know they've been in touch with Lisa. Um, in, in our fellowship, people pay tithes and offerings. Um, the easiest way for me to say to do it is if you go on to our website, uh, I don't know if pastors finish this still on it, we can get the church one up for tithes and offerings as well as the bank account for Reach Out Ministries. Changing Lives comes under Reach Out Ministries. So, and I know that people will get up and say, how can I pay me tithes and offerings and that. This is just for those that belong to the church and want to do this. All finances go to help people and keep everything running and things like that. It doesn't go into our pockets, please. It does not go into our pockets. Not even the staff receive anything from this. It goes in uh, for what it needs to really go into. So you can do that. May God bless you. May you fulfil every desire in heart. Please, Isaac's on tonight. And you're going to get a true word of God. I really believe him. Um, so, Phineas has just said he's there. Um, if you can put um, the church bank account details on, and I'll give you them all. Lisa will give you them. So people can pay their tithes and offerings. That's basically it. So it doesn't go into reach out ministries because of the charity commission and, and different things like that. So is that all right? May God bless you. Um, Amen, Esther. May God bless you and your husband in Pakistan. Bless those that are in, in Nigeria or different parts of Africa. Bless those that are in India. 
as well that have come on and uh, to have the word of God. Bless all those that um, are in our fellowship. May God truly bless you. Bless the lads in the centre. Um, just bless everybody, eh? Have a lovely day. God bless you. Amen. Bye-bye.